um, hearing, I do want to just make a note in terms of our agenda. We do have several other hearings that are on our agenda for this evening. So we did have a 7 p.m. and 8.15 and 8.45 and some business at 9. Um, so we are, as you can imagine, substantially you know, behind on that. But, um, but I just want to make folks aware that there is additional business uh, for us to be considering and carrying out later this evening. Uh, so, have you not seen the agenda? I just So, our public hearing is still open. Um, at this point, you know, since numerous comments have been made, I would like to recap again, um, as I did earlier, the issues that uh, that we heard prior to the opening of public comment, and then there are a number of additional issues that that I heard, so I would like for planning board members to weigh in if I've left anything off, um, and then we can you know, talk about how to proceed. Uh, so we certainly will be discussing sufficiency of parking relative to the size of the development, removal and replacement of significant trees, there was reference to tulip tree, uh, use of the existing house as a community space for residents, traffic impacts on the Dewey Court South Street intersection, um, the impact of construction equipment and what the construction schedule may look like, uh, questions about the buffer zone in the wetland, making sure that the site plan does adequately address that, uh, the grade of the pedestrian path, uh, review again of the snow removal plan just to make sure that everyone is clear on what that snow removal plan is. Uh, any, uh, oh, excuse me, I already said damage during construction. Cross that off. Um, and then the Conservation Commission permit for wetlands, we have already discussed that. So three additional issues related to construction equipment, review of snow removal, pedestrian path grade, and then uh, wetland, the buffer zone in the wetlands. Were there any other additional issues? Yes, I mean, what did I miss? That, that no cul-de-sac thing is like 11 feet wide and 16 feet wide. Okay, so circulation with regard to construction vehicles, deliveries, fire safety, etc. We'll want to just repeat that part of the same plan specifically. And I would say that pedestrian access to and from the existing sidewalk on the court to the project. <coughs> And I heard a comment related to traffic to limit the number of vehicles that could legally be put into that So complex. when we begin to have our discussion, we're going to talk through a whole variety of things. Um, and that may be something that we talk about, but you know, as we talk about site access, um, I will say that we largely, well, and maybe we'll have this discussion, there are you know, there's a, um, an area under which we have purview to require particular conditions, and um, it may or may not be prudent or even appropriate for our board to require something related to individual behavior on the site by, you know, by the site owner. But there are always we can talk about that. So uh, we do need to remain within our legal purview, at, you know, as as board. So that's a lot. Of it. Yes, sir. And, and I, I just. It, I don't know if it was, I'm still kind of confused if it was the ZBA that covered this or not, but because it was a, a, a butt end, uh, I forget what it's called, butt end on a dead end street or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, I know that the planning board, I think it's the planning board, uh, they have to find that it's, uh, that this additional building is detrimental to the characteristics of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Something of that nature. So what the zoning board just did was the zoning board was responsible for making a finding regarding the non-conforming frontage, and they did approve that. So they their role was to say that the lack of frontage is not an issue to them with regard to this particular project. So they is that a correct characterization? Um, they. Um, Determined that the change in the, in the lack of frontage yet yeah, doesn't isn't substantially more than the neighborhood than the existing conditions because it relates to access. Right. So the zoning board just now decided that that change isn't substantially more detrimental than current conditions. Okay. So it, so the frontage issue is not pertinent to us. Right. Right. And so I, I just wanted to clarify my letter and whatnot that 
the um, the road is 27 feet. We all agree with that. But the opening going onto this property is 16 feet. Mm -hmm. Just just to let everybody know. Okay. Yeah. I mean, when we talk about circulation and, and traffic effects, we're you know we have all of us here have reviewed the site plans extensively and done site visits and such. And so I'm sure that that will come up in our discussion. I'm not sure, but um, I think yes, I'm next. Um, just curious. Um, by the special provisions given to this project, um, as a result, all the trees come down and all the other houses on the street are two stories. And now we have a three story building with no trees, and basically, anyone on the upper two stories, it's far enough back that they basically have access to everybody's backyard. Has that been covered? Is that been covered by the planning board, or is that something for zoning? So, because you gave special provisions for this to happen and it kind so, of just to clarify we have not granted any permit at this time okay. you know, we are still under deliberations so okay, I wasn't nothing sure. you know there has not been mm -hmm. anything that has been issued at this mm -hmm. time we are reviewing the application and making our determination um, there is a planting plan that the site will remain heavily covered in numerous trees there are um, two trees that are slated for removal with mitigation that is in line with the zoning that exists. Um, but we'll talk about the size of the project. Um, I'm sure that planning board members will, you know, will discuss how it fits in with the neighborhood. Well, I'm mostly concerned about the pictures over there that you can see that the new, the new building, especially in the blue sky colored picture, and marks that um, the new building just basically just invades everybody's privacy in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I know special provisions would have to be made to have that happen. And that's what we're hoping okay. to get our discussion underway, either at okay. this hearing or future. Thank hearing. you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I just want to get clear. So, if I, I'm in the developer's pictures, in one of them, all there are no trees between the carport and the neighbor, and in another one, it's all full of trees. Mm -hmm. Which is real? So, I'm gonna actually, since our public hearing is still open, I'm gonna ask Jeff if you could just pull up those slides again. Now, we do have a number of different plans that are designed to show different things, so I want to make sure that you're not looking at you know, the lighting plan or something or something that's been modified. Oh, he's you know, getting that fired up again. Can, if I just couldn't hear everything you were saying, but the zoning board has approved his special permit, am I to understand it? No, that is not just correct. The, so okay. Just the frontage. Just the frontage issue. Um, they have just made That was only about the frontage. Correct. Right. Yes. Okay. So I'm sorry, I just couldn't really hear anything. No, no, that's around, okay. So. I apologize. According to the arborist diagram, they're removing seven trees. So. So, I, I just want a point of clarification too that a comment was made about the arborist report referring to sanitary line within five feet of these two trees in the center of the site. I just want to reiterate that that study was done when we were considering replacement of that existing line. That line has since moved outside. If you look at, I can go down to that's not that sanitary line which you see in red is now been moved outside of the drift line of those trees specifically because of that recommendation and concern from the arborist. Um, and additionally, uh, one of the re one of the other reasons it was relocated in this position is because right now it runs down through an adjacent to Butters property and adjacent to a 42 inch sugar maple. Um, that's roughly right around here. Um, and if we were to replace that line in its current location, we would undoubtedly disturb or destroy probably half a dozen trees along its path. So that's the reason we chose the path that we did. And can you just walk us through either the, the planting plans again or um, the picture, yeah, these pictures of... So, yeah, the planting plan, what right now this this edge particularly is uh, mostly made up of um, burning bush. Um, there are uh, several Norway maple saplings growing up. Um, there's some other scrub uh, uh, vegetation in there. There's a couple of trees that have since fallen into the site. 
Um, we're proposing to replant that edge with, um, we do have some, some plants and some screening along that edge to, to augment the, um, you know, again, the backside of the, of the carports. Um, again, we're not, the intention isn't to make the walls or the outside walls of those carports carports a, a, an ugly feature to look at. It's, it's intended to be, you know, an attractive architectural element that will, you know, sit on the site and blend in with everything else. So will it be a structure? Yes, it's not going to be a solid stockade fence, but there's going to be some, some architectural articulation to it that will be much more than what we would typically see for, you know, so, for a screen so, 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 so there aren't going to be trees there. there. Right. Just to remind you that we're not having dialogue, so yeah. we'll, if you want to ask us questions, you know, we'll... So can I just have that drawing over there? That is, is that the wall, the park, right? Uh, I presume so, yes. No, wait, let's consider that's what it is, right? Sure. So how high would be the, any vegetation? Any? Um, I'd have to look specifically at the plant to plant. I think it's all understory trees, so it's stuff that will get 16 feet. You know, I think there's some arborvitae. There are some um, <coughs> bedrooms. Yeah, there's a few other things in there that will help. Yeah. And again, we we located those plants specifically in response to where some of the views, some of the windows, some of the other, um, there's the building right up against this edge, um, same distance away. Um, so we're, you know, we're doing what we can to, to provide buffers from those points of view. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, so if I might, that, that area there up to the butter's line will be clear cut. Everything will be taken out. There's some small Norway maples in there and the burning bush. That will be clear cut. The, the uh, carport will be built and then you do a little planning plan. Yes, yeah. there's small things. Is there any reason why we couldn't put in some other spe some other trees of young mature trees that over time would grow up and leaf out? Um, no, I don't, I don't okay. think. We had any objection. Um, I, the only comment I would say is that, yeah, both structures, both carport and the adjacent house are very close. Yep. So anything large there would potentially present a hazard, but that's, you know, if, if the board wants some more trees along that edge, then I don't think that was, is a deal breaker by any. <clears throat> Just while we're on the idea of the carport on the other abutter across the driveway, <clears throat> I imagine the same thing is going to happen. You will clear kind of mostly. There are some mature tulip trees. trees. There's, there's much more of a, of a, a mature uh, tree stand on the eastern side of Dewey Court than there's western. So we, we are looking to protect as many of those trees as possible. Like I said, there is one large tulip tree that is, you know, the, 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 um, the cavity of it is, is completely rotted from about 40 feet up. Um, it's, a, it's a large tree. Um, the concern from the arborist is that, um, yeah, wind throw and you know other other you know, small elements um, present a hazard. So. And Jeff, just to clarify, the the agreement would be that you all would carry out all the tree protection measures that would be recommended by the arborist in our court and that are typically required by the. Right. And we would anticipate with this with this project in particular um, that there would be a, a dialogue and a site visit from uh, both the arborist and or tree warden, um, you know, prior to the commencement of, of you know, construction activities to ensure that you know, we're doing everything that we can to um, do what we said we would also add that once they, you know, it, so for the trees that are being protected, if they do die over you know, the course of the site plan, those trees will have to be replaced. So the site plan is, is something that's set in place. If there's a tree there and it dies, it has to be replaced. So just to reiterate for the public, what Carolyn is explaining is that with regard to tree protection, the tree protection ordinance in Northampton, um, this is sort of a, a, um, a hard and fast situation where if there are trees on the plan that are going to be planted, it, if they die, a person can't just say, oh, well, they died, sorry. They do need to be, the, the site plan needs to be experienced in real life as it is on paper. So trees will need to be replaced if they don't survive uh, 
So how does that translate to say it's a 36 or 40 inch tree? So the way that we deal with that when it comes to significant trees and removal of significant trees, the caliper inches are replaced based on the diameter at breast height of the tree. Um, and so that is part of our city's way of kind of balancing removal of large trees with development efforts is to calculate how many inches um, may be removed and then ensure that that same, um, it's uh, one half, is that right? It's one half the number of inches removed need to be replaced. Maybe that would mean planting, in some cases we've had applications where that means planting 10 trees, in other cases it's 65 trees, but it is a mathematical calculation based on the actual measurements of the size of the trees being removed. Yes, ma'am. Um, according to the trees assessment study that Berkshire Design commissioned by your arborist, you know, all the trees on that portion we're talking about abutting my property, I mean, the, uh, all the poplars are indicated to be in good condition. So all of a sudden they're not in good condition. And you indicated as well that two trees are going to be removed. But I'm looking at the chart here, and seven are going to be removed. So which is, which is the real one? The one tulip tree that I mentioned is a hazardous condition is noted in the report as being a hazard tree. Where, um, are you talking about tree number 1.3B? That's 40 inch caliper and it says good condition. And read the notes at the end? Yeah, it does say there's some like, decay, sure, but it's good condition. Well, so there are a variety of factors that the developers do consider for every well, project that condition. comes before us. So a tree may be in good condition according to this report, but the risk, the future risk of that tree is also taken into consideration. Um, again, part of the tree replacement ordinance is designed to kind of balance this removal of trees for development. Um, we didn't have a tree replacement ordinance a couple of years ago, right, or yeah, several years ago. Um, but you know we do need to apply that ordinance consistently across projects, mm -hmm. and there are many criteria that are considered in whether a tree is going to be removed. I don't know if there's some confusion about the tree. So uh, the plan needs to show the trees that are coming down. Any tree that's healthy, that's over 20 inches, has to be replaced according to the formula. If the applicant wants to um, have a tree discounted from that replacement calculation because it's diseased or dying or a hazard tree, the arborist needs to know exactly that and then the city has to confirm that even though that tree is coming down, it's a hazard tree and so therefore it doesn't need to be replaced. That's the way the zoning works. It, it replaced in terms of the formula for planting. And the person the from the city would do that is the Northampton City Tree Warden. Correct? Right. So through our office, we would, you know, we would ask that the um, that the report specifically focus in. Now, there's some information about how the tree's in good condition, but the notes say actually there's some decay. So we need clarification. Well, it says confirmed that. by aerial inspection. Was it confirmed? So if this can, if the tree is noted to come down, it's really becomes it's, it's really a matter of it what says the confirm is. need to be confirmed with an aerial inspection and has it been, and it was just a possible problem, but it was shown to be in good condition according to the chart. I'm just reading the chart. So yes, I understand that. I think we'll ask Jeff to clarify, but just understand that that this is. Uh, this is a request from the applicant. The tree warden is the person who would make the final determination about how many inches of trees. And so that would not even happen unless or until there is a permit issued, correct? Well, typically what happens is, you know, there, the, I think, Jeff, can you confirm that tree is marked on as to remove? Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So that's listed as a tree that's going to be removed. Right. The only question at does hand it is, does it count into the tabulation of re replacement under the ordinance, or does it get subtracted out of that requirement? Right. And that final calculation doesn't actually get done until the project's completed because things, um, might, you know, there might be more information that comes in along the way. So we, we always, sort of prior to a certificate of occupancy, okay. we do the final calculation. How many trees came down, which ones get um, exempted from that replacement calculation, and which ones have to be um, 
um, assigned you know, replacement value, and then the applicant has the choice of either planting on site, planting within the right of way, or paying into the city tree fund. Right? Okay. And so just to clarify, Jeff, the, the aerial confirmation hasn't happened yet on the Correct. design side. Okay. Correct. Just yeah. to further clarify, there's confusion over numbers two versus seven and so forth. The two number is significant trees. There are two trees over 20 inches that are being removed. More than that, uh, a greater number of uh, those of trees smaller than 20 inches are being removed. But the two that we're talking about are the significant trees. Correct. And those are the only ones that fall under our purview in terms of Correct. the zoning ordinance. Correct. So, yes. can I, I'm just trying to get clarity. So, if you're saying that a tree that the arborist says is in good condition has some rot or some decay, as we all know, is a but, hazard. Yep. But it doesn't say it's a hazard. It's, it's, it's called, called a risk tree. tree. Is that what it says on the report? Yeah. And, and just to further clarify, we did include replacement, um, replacement caliper for that tree, regardless. Why didn't you say that 10 minutes ago? <laughs> so what he's saying is that whether or not that, that tree, if, if everybody ends up agreeing, yes, it was a risk and a hazard and it's going to fall down and, and you don't need to be responsible for it, they have already gone through the process of assuming they are responsible for replacing it in their planting plan and the payment into the tree fund. So to clarify for your better sake, though, the caliper estimation None of those trees are going to be replaced on site. I think. Correct. Oh, so as, into the as of right now, just because of the heavily wooded nature of the site, right. because of some of the comments and questions about that, um, about carports yep. on that yep. line, there may be an opportunity yeah. to put a couple of trees yeah. there. Yeah. So to reiterate, the zoning, there are three ways that people can deal with tree removal. They can replace with. They can replace trees on the site they're developing. They can replace tree with trees in the tree belt next to the street um, and the sidewalk, or they can pay into a tree fund, and trees will be planted in other parts of the city of Northampton. Um, so all of those things get at our need to to kind of mitigate the loss of cow branches. Like a carbon tax. Kind of like a carbon tax, I guess. Yes. Uh, did you have a comment, Mark? Uh, I don't, but uh, I will, in, in reference to a sleep tax, um, we're three hours into the meeting and yes. I don't yes. see this being, uh, we're just getting going. Yes. Uh, what I would advocate for is, I, I don't think, in the 30,000 foot view, I don't think the, the, the problem with the intersection at Dewey Court and South Street is the applicant's fault. I agree. Uh, however, like a lot of projects that come before us, we, we did talk a lot about the architectural design or the extensive amount of work that was done with Smith College and the layout, and the, um, which I think are, are very strong. Um, yes. I think that as far as a proposal, it's a strong, proposal. strong proposal. We didn't talk a lot about that. We talked 98% about traffic, yes. and that's what we talked about a lot. Yes. Um, so we've had projects with uh, less discussion uh, warrant a full traffic study. Um, so I would advocate to continue the hearing, have the applicant get a, do a full traffic study, and at the same time give the applicant, um, they've heard uh, over the course of the past three hours, what what is important to the abutters and to the planning board. I would give them a hit list of things to think about, like plantings, behind the carports to the abutters, things like that, you know, adding trees in that area, and all the, the list of things that you went through, and have them leave with a homework assignment, the main thing being the traffic study. Um, uh, again, I don't, I don't think it's their fault, but, it, but the information that we're working with is, is dated, and right. it's, not, right. it's not applicable. Yeah, I mean, I definitely hear what you're saying, and I, and I could be convinced to do that. My only issue is that it feels very much like this is the responsibility of the city. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I agree with that. And I'm so, but I'm, I'm wondering if the traffic, so I'm not expecting this traffic report uh, study right. to, to fix that problem. That's right. the city's problem. That's not the outcome's problem. But if the traffic study shows that traffic on Dewey Court uh, or, or, or the number of cars going into the development, mm -hmm. if there's more information that comes forward about that, um, that that might help us uh, decide of whether or not this applicant's proposal should go forward or not. Right. Um, that's why I think the study might help. Yeah. 
Can I just add yes. a couple comments about traffic? And I know the idea is sort of figure out um, a list of things to send off for continuation because you do have more permits to deal with. But just in terms of traffic, there was a, there were some issues about what's 14 trips versus 100. What it really comes down to, and what the applicants have to address, are the peak hour trips. So there are 14 peak hour trips based on the number of units. And it's because it's based on units, it's not based on bedrooms, there's not an assumption of how many people are living in a unit and driving based on the bedrooms. Um, the, and, and you said it before, the, the existing a traffic study is going to look at turning movements, an assumption of how many cars are going to be left, turning left, turning right. right. Um, the um, the it's not going to change though the the number will still come back out that the 14 peak hour trips which is the most important which means it's during the peak hours it's not the flow all day long it's really at the points where um, you know sort of rush hour right, right? right. so I mean that's uh, kind of my issue I think the narrative is already quite clear. I don't see the, the narrative that we've been provided changing at all with a full traffic study with regard to what... I, I, I don't show. disagree, yeah. but I, I think of, um, you know, soccer fields down at uh, the, the Island, Island, uh, and, and the traffic studies and all the noise about the traffic and so forth, and what came from that was a plan. How are they going to deal with that traffic? Mm -hmm. And so, in, in since that plan right now tonight doesn't exist, whether it's restricting the number of cars in, in the development or, mm -hmm. or off street park, whatever it is. Right. Um, if, and, and maybe that's what I'm trying to get at and thinking that the traffic plan would get us there. Right. Um, and if not, but we can come up with a plan, then I would advocate for that. Question? It's unclear to me how it, a tra I mean, this, this sounds like a, you know, forming a commission to study a thing that we already all know is a, is a problem. I mean, I'm not a traffic expert, but it seems to me very clear that the solution is not on Dewey Court at all. It's on South Street and the other intersection. And I don't. Uh, I'm very sympathetic to the to the to the resident and as a town. You know, somebody who lives here and goes through that intersection all the time. I. I, I it seems like it, it's a it's a delay to the thing that's going to really fix it, which is the it's the city it's the city's right. gotta. So um, and, I don't, and I don't feel great about asking the developer to pay for something that the, the city yeah, should pay for. Why not? Well, the city should be paying for it. So yeah. it's more it's from, it's I'm not saying it should be paid for. I'm saying that the developer, the city, the city should. I think the developer is contributing to this. Sir, sir, I think sir, 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 sir. We do need to maintain stuff. That's how it works. I, I think, um, yeah, I, th I think more than the traffic study, I guess I'm looking for the plan. How, how is, how, if, if this is going to have an adverse effect, this is a special permit, so we have to take everything right. into consideration. And if this development is going to have an adverse effect on this street, then and we've heard that traffic is already a pre-existing issue, and, and we know that this isn't going to help, then what, what's the plan to, to mitigate that? So the other two things I want to just add is in terms of traffic counts and the, you know, the timeliness of it. I do have DPW's data for traffic counts on all the streets they've done collected over the last 10 years. Um, South Street has stayed pretty much the same in the 2013-14, and I don't know exactly where they're taking these because they're, they're numbered as poles on South Street. So, um, but it stayed in the um, you know 12 to 14,000 trips at ADTs on average daily trips on South Street based on I think the latest date that a, a count was taken was 2016. Sorry, um, 14. Um, so I and even this That's number wrong. is 12,000. So right. Pardon me. Thank you. So. Um, there's one thing to understand how much the total background volume is on the street. Again, we're looking at this, um, the zoning requires the applicants to address their incremental impact. So by assigning um, a payment in lieu of um, mitigating your traffic, you're doing it based on your project. So they are required to pay for those 14 new trips. So something that could be done potentially could be you know, improve, someone said something about the sidewalks are in deplorable condition on, on Dewey so that people now have to walk in the street. Well, 
that $14,000 could be put to fixing the sidewalks. So that's a way to mitigate the impact of those new trips. So that, but additional evaluation or traffic um, study is really just going to do traffic counts and then turning movement assumptions. But again, the issue is the bigger South Street network, people coming into town from East Hampton because they can't live in Northampton, so they have to drive from elsewhere to, on our streets to get here. If they put money Question. in for mitigation of what they've determined uh -huh. to be, does the developer, with you know, within discussion with the community, are they able to specifically direct it that way? Yes. They, so I mean, so they could say that the neighbors want better sidewalks and a side and, and a oh, wow. and a, uh, and, a <laughs> and a stoplight up South Street, you know, toward East Hampton. You can't do the stoplight. Stoplights are you know, take a whole lot of study and are extraordinarily right. expensive. <laughs> and don't always work. And Hi hypothetically. Right. Could a, could a so given solution be You dead? could, yes, the planning board could condition a permit to say, okay, we want, instead of going into the general pot for addressing traffic um, safety concerns within the neighborhood, um, you know, broader neighborhood, the condition could say it should be applied to improving, um, rebuilding the sidewalks to make them safe on Dewey for, for however long that $14,000 goes. The, ultimately, the City Council has to approve the expenditure of the money, but they'll look at a permit condition and say, okay, this is part of, you know, what the board has approved. Sidewalks are Question. fine, but it's the crosswalks that create the hazard to the pedestrians and to bicyclists. Yes. Well, at least one person said the sidewalks aren't fine. Yes. So. Right. But Question. Well, so there, there, are, there, are, there, are, me, there are a number of issues with the intersections there, again, that are separate and apart from this development that need to be addressed. But absolutely. You can't uh, separate them. Uh, we, that is our decision and our discussion, and that's what, why we're hearing from you, and we will have that discussion. Question. Yes, sir. It seems to me that the recommendation is for a traffic study. I would implore that the traffic study include traffic on Dewey Court. They said there will be a hundred car trips a day on our one block street. There's already difficulty with finding parking on our street. So it's not just the intersection, the impact of the development in a hundred cars. Um, we'll take that under advisement. Yes, I do want to reiterate you. from the applicant's presentation that typically when there is a problem with parking on an individual street, that the result is that there is evidence from the police department that people have called the police department about illegally parked cars or cars that are parking beyond the limit. There, there isn't any evidence that there is a parking problem to date. It, you know, we no certainly because it's, it's not illegal. Yeah. Because it's not illegal. We were told illegal. it was not illegal, illegal. illegal. Yes. not to complain. I think as a board, so we need to make some decisions about how we are going to go forward, but we have to use the information available to us, and these are data points that are provided to us. And so I think at this point, we need to decide if we're going to continue and make some requirement to the developer. Um, I'm still not 100% that a traffic, full traffic study I'm, I'm, I'm good without a traffic study. But a plan I, of I, some a plan, kind. But, but we have a, a hearing later tonight. Yes. Uh, that, and if we weren't happy, there was a traffic issue uh, that uh, we weren't happy with. And it was an, an existing problem that everyone in the neighborhood knew about. Right. And it was our last opportunity to do something about that. And so we wanted, we asked for a plan, come right. back with a plan. Right. And so I think that's what I'm asking for. I think, yeah, I think that that makes sense. Again, kind of expanding on what is already in the application with regard to provision of bicycle access, improvement to sidewalks and pedestrian access. I think all of those things plus the vehicular access and right. limitations on vehicles and on the site, if there is And for the sake of argument, if that $14,000 <coughs> to be applied to sidewalks, does that get us halfway down the road? Right. Or does it get us, you know, seven-tenths of the way down and the applicant will, will finish it off for us or whatever? What, right. Some sort of plan to alleviate what everyone knows is an existing problem. Can I make just other, one other general comment? Yes. Is that um, South Street is also Route 10. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That street is what? Mass DOT yeah. yeah. jurisdiction. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so for us to develop a plan that will be easily accepted 
is is a fallacy. I mean, yeah. we've been dealing with Mass Highway for a simple project for over a year now. It's you know, it's not just, unlike what's happening at Damon Road and everywhere else. It's a Mass Highway controlled intersection that we will have very little say over. So, I, one of the things I, I guess I'm my sense of the traffic, as I said before, is bad and it's going to continue to be bad. But I do think that relative to what we were talking about in terms of access, you know, pedestrian access to, I'm a little worried that there's, you know, you just, as you were saying, just walking in the road. That to me, of all the things, that actually sort of bothers me in terms of the development, mainly because I just think of good development as having safe access that's not in a in a road, um, and so like, if you were to define, uh, I'm less concerned about about uh, people driving uh, and that part of the, this development, and I'm more concerned about the fact that the flow, the pedestrian flow, given the type of development that it's this. The saying that it is, I'm imagining that there's supposed to be lots of people walking down Dewey Court to South Street, and it doesn't seem like it's a, a, it's not that friendly. It's not a friendly place to do that, and so I would love to see that improved. Uh, and and in that and in that way, I would I personally would support the would support the project. So would it be appropriate to make a motion to continue the public hearing so then we can start listing out some of these little chores for the applicant? Um, we do that before making a motion. Um, well, if you have an idea of what you want to list out, you yeah, can I mean, I don't have a, okay. much of a list at all. I mean, I, you know, aside from... Yeah. You listed a dozen items before. I listed items for our discussion. Um, I, personally don't have a number of specific things that I think the application would need to change with regard to those items. Um, that's my assessment. I think um, a plan to al alleviate traffic issues through potential limitations on number of vehicles or more managed parking access, you know, some specific assignment by unit or something like that, you know, those would be creative things that would be interesting to see. Uh, and then consideration of rather than traffic studies, some sort of payment for sidewalk improvements. Um, what so, else are you thinking? So George? I would like the applicant to talk with the city about that maple tree at the end of the sidewalk at Dewey Court where the driveway starts. That's, that's breaking a, up the sidewalk. That's a huge impediment to any kind of flow. Yeah. Um, yes. Talk with the Mojios, the abutters there, the DPW, and see what we can do about removing that tree what? and replacing it somehow. On that one thing. No. I think also um, there's a contentious the other tulip tree at the south mm -hmm. north the south corner um, it is a great specimen and I know this is contrary to kind of some of the traffic issues but if the if the applicant was to reduce some of the parking spaces which myself and other planning board members might think are too much. Um, that they might be able to save that tulip tree in that side. Um, people will automatically say then that those, if you don't have all the parking spaces on the project, then they'll be parking on my street. Maybe so, maybe not, but uh, I wouldn't think, I think so. Yeah, I think we need to have some discussion. I mean, I, we definitely all need to be in agreement that that's right. something we would want the applicant to yep. try to do, um, because that would be a lot of work in terms of this site plan, I think. I'd like to point something out quickly. I used to live on Fruit Street. Fruit Street also only has a sidewalk on one side of it, and it's not the side that the cut through path, the carriage path, bumps out onto. It's <coughs> onto a side of Fruit Street. It's not being used as a cut through to avoid that old South Street, Con Street intersection. And the traffic along that road was getting worse in the year that I lived there, with buses coming through and just people flying down that road to avoid that traffic light. So you're going from one dangerous traffic situation to another and bumping pedestrians out in exactly the same situation. Thank you. 
So, and this is not on the applicant, but if we do continue the hearing, I think it's really important for us to hear from the Cottage Con about their delineation of that NOI to see does it impact. Quite yet. <clears throat> to see if it does impact at all the building envelope. Well, if you continue it to the 12th, the Conservation Commission will have had their hearing, yep. so that would be the 12th is the next available. And I'm, I'm sure we'd be interested in that also. Yes, we have had a lot of discussions with them. Um, just for everybody's information, <coughs> isolated wetlands are the non-DEP jurisdictional. They're only um, jurisdictional in, in uh, according to wetland bylaws and regulations. Uh, we have a 35 foot no disturb uh, line, which is what we're respecting. And the choice to relocate the sanitary line out from underneath the that entire wetland system is a huge benefit. Yeah, sure. Okay. sure. So, go ahead. Yes. Um, and this goes along with the um, sort of the issue about pedestrians. Uh, um, I don't remember his name, but you mentioned the grade of the of the pedestrian walkway so it seems like what I, I see that there's a possibility not only to um, uh, that it did, it's already an existing path that's used quite frequently but that if you actually you know, that if you improve it and you make it a path that it, it will increase and I, I was concerned did I is that a correct characterization about the grade of that path um, so so it's two things one is it's just the in, in, I mean, maybe the thing we really need to be studying is the increase of pedestrian traffic that does, as as was mentioned, dump out onto an unsafe place of, on South Street um, A. And two, is is that a fair characterization of the grade of that pathway? And that seems... So right now, the path extends from the end of that sidewalk or end of the driveway, really, the turnaround, and cuts north or southwest across the site to this corner. That is all roughly at grade. Mm -hmm. There's a slight, slight slope to the south, um, but it is relatively at grade. Um, we're proposing to, to relocate it to between these two buildings and traverse that slope that's on that side so it does get steeper. Um, I don't know if 12% is the correct grade. Um, it, is, it is steeper than 5% for sure, but that is primarily due to two reasons. One, this is a private path that we're proposing to retain primarily out of convenience for the people that are using that cut through now. There's no obligation um, sure, on any no, part of this that. development to you know, put a public pathway in there because there is nothing to connect it to. Um, and so we're providing that as, um, as, as an entity because we think it's the right thing to do. Um, you are allowed um, on on um, on recreational trails to grade up to eight um, percent in, in certain situations for limited distances, and we're doing that primarily to to maintain the, the existing tree cover that is there. Because a lot more, uh, much more grading there would require um, a lot more tree removal and a lot more grading in that hillside. Sure. Um, are there, uh, the the carriage path that you're going to relocate the storm and the sewer line down. Yes. That's Smith, Smith Cobb's property. Right. Currently upstream from there, there's a couple of outfalls from the, the, that creates a lot of erosion on that path. So I would hope that some of that's taken into consideration when you're talking about the final grading or the grading work on that. Yes, and one of, the, one of the discussions with Smith was mm -hmm. primarily that, is that um, the easement language that is being drafted will not prohibit them from the, having the ability to tie into that drainage structure, that drainage infrastructure in the future, so that would therefore help to facilitate and alleviate some of those concerns. Okay. okay. So if we are, yes, ma'am. So I, I have a question pertaining to what he just exactly said regarding Smith College and the easement. So if they're going to tie, if this allows Smith College to tie into nope. the easement. Nope. It just reserves for further future it, it, development. It, it provides them the right to tie into it in the future should they choose to. So it's being made large enough so that they can do that in the future. There's going to be a drain manhole and a drain line that connects to Fruit Street to accommodate um, just storm water. Not storm water. Just storm, water. Right. And just storm water. We are going to continue our okay. hearing, so there will be more information provided and another opportunity to, to discuss this. Um, so we are not going to close the public hearing this evening. There will be an additional opportunity to, to come and raise new issues and, and hear clarifications from the applicant. 
Yes, ma'am. Can I just ask a question? You've said a couple of times that that's the city's responsibility. I'm kind of thinking you guys are the city as well. Or am I we are not. So we are the special right. permit granting authority. We are not employees of the city. This is a volunteer board, okay. and our only purview is reviewing the applications that come before us. Okay. So we do not proactively determine how the city <clears throat> spends its budget, what projects it undertakes, etc. Right. So the city, as a financial entity, could choose to spend its its funds um, on things like traffic studies. Understood. So my question is: Is there a ordinance threshold or rule where if there was a study done that showed an increase in death or injury or safety issues is there an ordinance that is a, that forces you to then make a specific choice because it sounds like you're saying it doesn't matter what comes back on the study what matters no matter what comes back well, we've it has the, nothing the to do with the letter study. grades and so the term in transportation world is level of service los yep. so any change in los is something that that would require actual mitigation to happen right um, and so that's that's the trigger that's the data point that a traffic study would identify so if we're already at bottom which is what kind of people keep sort of inferring but without necessarily i don't know if it's factor of inferral is that it's it can't go a professional narrative so it is a professional assessment right yeah. so if that's the case and it can it can get worse but there's no letter grade to prove does that mean that there is no way for you to make a decision based on whether a traffic study came back as worse than before? Well, again, the, the letter grade is the data point that is used. So there's, you know, and that is determined by the Institute of Transportation Engineers. That is a hard and fast data point. It doesn't come from a group of people in the city cooking it up or anything like that. Um, and so there are certainly are variations. You'll see letter grade F that someone might say, I feel so unsafe here. I'd walk across the street blindfolded, but there's places where where that would feel different for someone else. And so that is the the threshold where action needs to be taken. So there's no rule to follow if the letter grade is just, there's nothing lower than F is what you're saying. Right, I mean, because <coughs> you have no new data point. Precise. Yes. So if we are going to continue our hearing, can we reiterate the things that we would want the applicant to think about in coming back? There's one more thing I'd like to ask. Yes. What is more it, information, Some clarity around the community house. I think mm -hmm. it's a little bit of a slippery slope that people can have guests stay there. I would like to know for how long or some kind of. Okay, I don't know that that's our purview. Yeah, I don't, unless it would have uh, a measure. Well, if it becomes a little bit. Excuse me, folks. Thank you. Yeah, Carolyn, can you clarify if that would be part of our site plan review? Or yeah, what well, you you want to understand, you know, the function of it. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I think that. I mean, yeah, I think you've heard that the unit, some of the units are smaller, and so instead of having to have bigger space, this can be so like space. So you need to be comfortable that that's the case. I don't think that you would um, would dictate how many days per year that could happen. But if it's only for the purposes of the tenants who are already there, as opposed to you just want to clarify that they're not renting it out exactly. to somebody yeah. else who's exactly. so not so living there. Jennifer, so Ben spoke about that. events, however. He no. said there were going to be public yeah. events yeah. there. I don't believe the applicant said public events. I think he said that their management company could bring in a, a lecturer for folks who are living there, you know, for so, community, you know, for the community that is on that site. But yes, I so what is this community actually doing for the town of Northampton? It's advocating itself as a community space that's bringing something to the town. Really, it's not. It's creating another self-enclosed community that's not helping the town at all. Yeah, I think, Ben, when he's using the term community, he is talking about the development. So yeah. this is a privately owned parcel, yeah. and he is able to, to do a variety of things on it. I think if he believes his apartment complex could have amenities like lectures, that's a reasonable thing to do. It's um, There is no requirement that there be some sort of you know public function. I think at this point, we should be thinking about our motion to continue. Right, I think we're going down a rabbit hole. Yes. Can I ask a question about that continuation? So I'm going to pause you because we are going to continue the hearing. So there will be additional opportunities. We do have additional items on our agenda. We do need to get to them. Just one thing to add. Yes. So we, we have a layout of the, of the pros apartment complex. Maybe a layout of the, um, the meeting house or whatever <coughs> uh, would be helpful for us to understand <coughs> how that space is going to function. Okay. So, so there's I see four things right now that plan to alleviate traffic issues with some sort of 
vehicle management on the at the complex. Uh, sidewalk improvements, proposal for some sidewalk improvements, discussion with the city about the maple tree that is causing some disruption to the sidewalk right at the entrance of the site, and the layout of the meeting house. The question is the tulip tree. Um, yes, go ahead. The, the, the space between, for the abutters, say, between the back of the cardboard the and the abutters, if instead of I think they've already plantings, they're they are going to be willing to. Yeah, so I just want to make sure that's good. Yeah, we, all right. So some sort of updated plan for that, and then where are folks on site modification to try to save that to a tree? I think it's worth looking into. I don't know that I would make it a condition. Well, I mean, yeah, we're not conditioning anything. Right. No, that, so. I'm just saying it's. I think um, it's a good faith effort to look at it. Good faith effort yeah. to see if there's an alternative in the site. Like we present the trade offs, you know. Right. 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 Knowing that, that even in other applications, we have had strong discussion about not enough parking being provided. They are providing more parking in an attempt to offset a lot of public input in other locations about there not being enough parking. And so, again, yes, what would the trade offs be if the tulip tree were to be saved? I think those would be the five, excuse me, six. Traffic study. Six things. That we are not recommending no. a full traffic study at this time. We are not recommending a full traffic study at this time. That's yes. negligent. There was one question uh, from staff, I don't know if you saw this, Jeff, or not, about the, the carport, the lighting at the carport that it exceeded by the panels. panels. Yeah, so underneath, and I'm trying to think, these are recessed lights underneath the roof of that um, those carports, which mm -hmm. have solid walls on three sides. Because of the nature of the framing in those carports, it's necessary to achieve a certain light level just to be able to see and with reflections and shadows. So underneath those recessed lights, I think there may be some spots that are probably five foot candles. Um, again, all the light glare is captured inside those three walls or pointed toward the new building. Um, so, so excuse me, a little bit. Is that an issue if it's over five foot candles, but it's, you but it's not grant, spilling over the. You'd still have to grant a waiver. Okay. Yeah. still five on the site. So okay. that would be right. something that they need to come back or you can condition. Okay. All right. Okay. So I think like, this yes. is a good point. I'd like to uh, make a motion to, pull, um, to uh, extend this to, to, to extend this hearing to the 9 12 meeting at 7 p.m. with all the topics that you just reiterated. To all of us here. Um, is there a second? Yeah, second. All those in favor? Yes. Can I ask a question before you close the public comment? We have no, public comment. Yeah, we're um, keeping can I ask you a question before you send us away with a yeah. list of yes. tasks? Yes. Um, thank you for going through the everything, first of all. Um, my, my question is uh, having been through this process multiple times in the past and wanting to be sensitive about not creating excess waste or excess work for members of DPW or other city personnel. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to understand what you would like for me to come back with with regards to the project plans rather than narrative explanation so uh, that I can ask members of our team to prepare everything appropriately. So I think that with regard to the sort of vehicle access and management that we would be looking for narrative, correct? I mean, that, I would think that that would be something that's addressed through a narrative versus an update to the site plan, per se. Um, the, you know, with regard to the tulip tree, that would be a modification to the, the site plan itself. Um, if it's feasible, it bring if it's feasible, right. right. Um, the layout for the meeting house, Mark, you're thinking like if they if they would make any changes to the interior layout and such, like just that. Yeah, so we, we've got a, just a floor plan exactly. for okay. Yeah. So just floor plans of what the the clubhouse, meeting house, community house for the site would be floor plan for that, so, um, and then sidewalk improvements. I mean, again, I, that would just be narrative, correct? I, mean, well, I think for the and for the sake of the the public, if. If the entrance is going to change in any way, sidewalks or or that circular roundabout was questions or, or to the proximity of the carports, those who pull back or something physically changes in that area, which we're advocating for at least at the entrance, that a drawing should be produced.
to help further illustrate that. So if the city were to say yes, we'll, we recognize that this maple tree has destroyed the sidewalk in this place. Right now, the pedestrian access to the lot goes right through one of the rain gardens. And I think in order to access that striped crosswalk, yeah, the rain, the, the sidewalk ends, and then they have a rain garden. Then there's the striped crosswalk right. from the parking structure. So I, we have to separate people walking into the project from the driveway somehow, to some degree. We can, we can. I mean, the, really, the only option there is to eliminate that rain garden and direct them directly to that to that crosswalk. They're just there. again, we're we're so constrained site wise up at that end, given the existing trees and driveways, and trying to retain disturbance within yeah. the existing drive. Well, that's, if you think if you were to look at that and you can and report back, that, yeah. that would be what we're looking for. Yeah. Uh, one yeah. comment, because the applicant was asking for guidance on the building itself. I haven't heard many comments from the public or within the board of saying I love it. yeah that that I love it. Uh, the way it sits the, the massing you know uh, I, the, I haven't had any and i i don't personally have any issues with it either so. no, no, no. Not not <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we did not actually take a vote. We did have a motion. Uh, we did Wait, a vote uh, in favor, but sorry, I'm yeah. it just yeah. I, I I believe that I want to I want to give you what you're asking for, and I just want to be sure that I'm, I'm getting it all. Uh, sidewalk improvement. If we have a, a, that becomes a question of choosing to allocate the money that we're using for the traffic mitigation, and just saying that we want for it to be applied toward the sidewalk the tree on the sidewalk having a conversation with the city and if they are in agreement that that tree should come down and we then we can work it into the site and if they are not in agreement that that tree should come down is there a proposition or something specific that you would like to see uh with regards to pedestrian access into the site but i think what george was saying is you know to the extent practical, if it is practical, seeing a plan that shows that there's pedestrian access that is separated from the, the circular driveway, so, only if that's I mean, right now we're, we're pushing people into the street, and so if there's any way to avoid that, that's what we're. And asking. and my, I get I understand that if the city says let's take the tree down, if the city says no, we're not taking the tree down. I, I believe, and Jeff's the one really to speak to it. There's not a way for us to improve the site because of that sure. tree canopy, sure. right. right? So you, you're asking for us to have that conversation with the right. city. Right, okay. I don't it's think it's a good right. faith effort to... Right. And no, 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 I, I, again, I, I just want to be clear. Uh, yeah. Floor plans about the house, an updated planting plan by the carports, uh, and then a tulip tree versus parking conversation, and then the mm -hmm. parking, the five-foot candles underneath the parking structure. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I mean, that, if that is the, you know, if, if that isn't going to change, then that would be a, something that we would have to grant you a waiver for. Um, and, you know, even if it's kind of within that three-sided structure. Um, so, so I don't think that there's really any necessarily work to be done on your end. So would, would it be fair? Uh, is, if we could put three foot, uh, I, again, I'm speaking out of my turn. If we could put three foot candles in there because that's what this, the ordinance says that we should do, but five feet is will be better for the long-term residents and the light actually inside. Do you have a preference about what you would want for us to do? Well, if, if the minimum would, would allow for the safety and use of the space, then I would, I would say that. If not, then you'd say we would really need five-foot candles for the safety, then that's, we hear that discussion as well. Okay, thank you. And I, I would ask if, if if collectively it sounds like that 14,000 applies to sidewalks, I'd like to get a feel for you know, Jeff maybe. Uh, what $14,000 right. does that get us? You know, is that going to three feet of sidewalk or you know, 30 feet of sidewalk? Right. Mm -hmm. Then just a statement of use of the, this community or clubhouse. Yes. Like, I mean, that's right. I like the word In the narrative, but maybe expanding on that with the layout sure. would be useful. Um, we took our vote. Those in favor? Anybody opposed to that continuation motion? 
So if we are continued until the 12th of September. Um, very much look forward to it. The hearing is open, so I do want to remind folks, uh, both members of the public and folks on the planning board, that we are not, uh, we are bound by the open meetings law, so we are not going to be discussing this hearing amongst ourselves or with other members of the public. So when you see us in the grocery store, please don't come up to us and talk to us about this. Um, we will have to be talking away. Uh, and we will reconvene uh, at the 7 p.m. or so the 7 p.m. hearing on the 12th of September. Thank you very much. And we do have additional items on our agenda, so if you want to discuss the project, please do so far. <laughs> Oh, we got one. Oh,
So um, I'd love to give them an opportunity to take a look at it so that they have a full understanding of what this is. But very, very quickly, uh, we started this project, uh, if you remember, uh, having to do some green space requirements, do some uh, incorrect calculations from previous projects. We were able to get the, uh, we originally were proposing to put 17 trail yards in, uh, but due to green space requirements, we brought that down to 12. And we also compensated by removing some other pavement areas so that we are currently under the threshold of 20% requirement. Okay, that's all this was representing, just kind of showing you an overall view of the plant site. The project location is really it revolved around uh, the site. So, uh, south east corner of the property. Um, and that's really where all the work is being done, with the exception of a few removals of pavements that are no longer required to make them green. So the, uh, the actual scope of the project at, at this point, based on the green space requirements, is to construct 12 uh, trailer yard staging areas. Uh, the idea here for that is uh, we don't really have anything on site currently where we have income, incoming traffic, they have no place to go. Uh, they end up either idling somewhere on the, on the site with their engines running or, uh, God forbid, you know, we have one or two on occasion that are off on the industrial boulevard. So one of the reasons for this project is to try to eliminate some of that, and we'll talk a bit more about that because it dovetails a little bit with some of the concerns that the uh, neighboring residents had. Uh, but in general, we have 12 sites, uh, 12, sites, excuse me, 12 uh, parking areas in the back. Uh, they are uh, congruent with the large apron that's in the back, so that right near the listed docks. Uh, we're able to accommodate the additional uh, stormwater runoff with the detention pond that was there. The, detention, uh, the original detention pond was not actually constructed uh, in full accordance with what they were actually planning, so we're actually able to dig out a little bit more of that and accommodate the additional stormwater that's uh, being created by the small additional pavement area. Uh, there were some wetland issues that were brought up that we took a look at, and we hired a wetland biologist to take a look at potential wetland issues along Route 91. There were no wetlands, so we were able to eliminate that, so we're outside the buffer. Uh, lighting, I can show you in the back here. This is a lighting diagram. I think you all have this anyway, but. So obviously we had to comply with the lighting requirements, full count requirements of the city of Northampton. Uh, we actually worked with the lighting manufacturer and came up with the lighting uh, contouring uh, and everything is met as far as the code. So basically we came with each, uh, to you last, uh, last month with a project uh, that met all code requirements, planning requirements uh, without the need for any variances. And, uh, and then we discussed some other issues relative to the impact, and that's when some issues were presented to us uh, that you've asked Coca-Cola, you charged Coca-Cola to take a look at, uh, and we'll get to that in just a second. What we did want to do is give an opportunity to really talk about why they're looking for this from an operational standpoint and what that does and what benefits that creates, uh, not only for uh, the plants, but what it does relative to the other concerns that were addressed. So the main reason, reason for this project um, is really want to improve the flow of traffic internal to the site. Um, you know, this allows us, this drop through bar yard allows us to have a truck enter the facility, um, drop a trailer, pick up another trailer, and exit in a very timely fashion. Right? So it will reduce the amount of time that we actually have that truck out on the facility. Um, that's a benefit, and we'll talk about some of the concerns of the citizens. Well, one of the big reasons. Um, why we want to turn them around quickly. A driver is not getting paid if they're not driving. So in order to be a customer of choice for the carriers, um, they want a quick turnaround time. They want to be back on the road, they want to be back and earning money. So one of the hopes that we have with this project is if we can turn them around very quickly, that will then want them to come to our facility to pick up, and that should improve um, the number of repeat drivers. The trucking industry has a tremendous amount of turnover. Uh, currently, they turn over about every 12 months which means we have a lot of new drivers from the facility that are creating some of the issues, and we're hoping this will be a benefit. Um, it eliminates us from staging the other areas, as Mike uh, mentioned earlier, and um, it should absolutely reduce idling and the idling noise associated with that. So I know there were some concerns with some of the folks I was talking with outside about teams coming over the property. Um, by having them drop, hook, and go, uh, that should reduce idling in the wintertime when the drivers are trying to keep warm, in the summertime when they're trying to make cool. Uh, so those are the main drivers behind why we want to have to travel. All right, so um, at this point, we just want to, we want to talk to you a little bit about what we did for this past month. 
relative to some of the concerns that you had charged us with at the last meeting. And uh, they were, you know, we, had, we started with a couple and it grew into four as, as we were going along. So I'll just go, I'll briefly just explain those so that everybody can hear what those were. Uh, one of them was the fact there were some concerns about truck traffic uh, in, uh, in the, the local neighborhood. Uh, as well as within the city, with under the bridge, under the bridge there at Bridge Street, uh, there was the issue of congestion in front of the facility itself, where the gate was at. Uh, there was also some concerns about that this project would increase uh, truck traffic that was actually coming to the plant. And then the last thing was that there were some uh, there was some concern about truck noise and truck pollution, and truck fumes, and those kind of things. So we want to touch base on all all four of those because we actually looked at all four of them. And we have some uh, some thoughts and ideas and solutions that we want to present. Uh, we've already talked uh, with a number of the residents uh, and shared their concerns, and I think uh, I think we got some good melding of the minds. Um, so, uh, as you most of the planning board members probably know, Coke and the city have been working on the variety of these issues for a while now, uh, and there were little things that were put in place along the way to try to see if they could mitigate various you know. It's never been, it's not, this is like not necessarily a new problem, it's always been tackled and trying to, in the new developments, try to somehow mitigate certain things. And some of the things we have in place right now is the signage uh, in the neighborhood, the $300 fine that's on the various streets uh, along Bridge Street, and that's actually it's all over the place now, we tend to drive around again, so a lot more today. But um, also uh, signage, uh, one of the key signages that we need, or that we were looking at, uh, that's on Damon Road, it's actually across the intersection from uh, the exit across Bridge Street on the Damon Sutton Road. Uh, it's there, and very frankly, unless you're looking for it, you probably won't see it, okay? And we'll talk a little bit more about what we propose for that. Um, we've been, uh, Coke has been uh, putting quarterly reminders out to all its drivers about the proper routing that it's supposed to be doing. It's been doing that for a while now. Uh, and then uh, there's also some signage that was put in place, uh, or is in place, I should say, quote, put in place, but there's some signage that uh, is along Bridge Street as it goes to city center with some escape routes, we call it, rather than detours. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as well because we think we have a solution for that for you as well. Uh, obviously, we know that uh, you know the, the tractor trailers that are in the industrial park, yes, there's probably a good majority of them that belong to Coke, but it really is an industrial park problem. There are other tractor trailers in that facility. Uh, Coke is, wants to take a lead on it to try to propose some improvements that would not only affect them, but that would affect the entire Delaware Park. Okay. So, uh, so since last uh, since last board meeting, we've had meetings uh, with the mayor, we've had meetings with Carolyn, we've had meetings with Representative Nash, Terry Madison, as well as District Two Mass Highway, okay, to look at possible solutions. And the results of those meetings uh, resulted in uh, had a number of discussions, came up with some results, and Pope would like to propose some pretty much immediate proposed pursuits. Okay. The first one, and probably the most, in our opinion, uh, as uh, site professionals, the most productive would have better signage at the intersection itself. And not at the intersection of the exit ramp and the bridge, but actually up from that. So we had discussions with Mass Highway about allowing them, or allowing Coke, to be able to put signage on the northbound lane of 91, that basically directs <coughs> traffic when they get off the exit that they were not allowed to take a left-hand turn. Okay. Now the conversation has always been around Coke. We want to propose to the city that the city consider all truck traffic, not make a left turn. Okay. Because you have bridge problems, right? Bridge problems, you know, other trucks are going through there, other trucks are going in industrial park, that maybe all trucks entering or going into the industrial park must take Damon Road. Obviously we don't want to exclude all trucks because yeah, the post office there, and then you go down the Bridge Street. <clears throat> so, uh, Mass Highway has been open to those suggestions. We also want to put another sign right on the exit, so that there's like a double layer of warning. And whether or not they will allow us to be able to flashing lights or not, you know, that's kind of out of our control. Obviously, we would like, both would like as much as they can possibly get, and we have to follow through with those discussions with Mass Highway with the support of the city because I think if the city behind the idea then it's going to be a lot more fruitful. Um, so the idea is that uh, no trucks when they leave the exit would be able to go left and it would be handled by signage rather than after the exit where you can't really see it 
on the exit and even on to the uh, northbound lane. We did talk to Mass Highway about the um, changes with the roundabout coming. There's going to be four traffic um, traffic pattern changes. So the verbiage, we're going to be very careful with the verbiage to say you stand in the road rather than saying take the first left, right. take the next right, whatever it happens to be, because we know that's going to change. Mm -hmm. And it will also allow now that they move the sign um, if need be as, as the traffic pattern changes. Yeah, well, interesting. I mean, that's, that's at least two years out before that happens. Uh, so uh, we would like, Coke would like to continue its discussions with Mass Highway in this, in that we have an interim solution if possible, and that when that gets developed and fully designed, that they incorporate in the roundabout scenario signage specifically for this. And having a roundabout scenario is actually even better than the current situation from a truck standpoint, because now everybody is automatically forced to the right. Right? Nobody can make a left. They have to go all the way around. So Coke's pretty optimistic about that. You know, we're going to have to have discussions with Mass Highway. We continue those discussions. Again, we need the city support and backing on that so that you can help us push that. Um, Coca-Cola has also offered to put that bill for the signage with Mass Highway. Okay. So uh, you know, they've kind of talked some pricing and things like that. And assuming that the Mass Highway will allow that, Coca-Cola has uh, volunteered that they would pay for that cost. Uh, they will continue to do the quarterly reminders. You know, it's not like we're taking anything away. We're just going to continue doing what we've been doing all along. Uh, they're also going to uh, create an improvement uh, to the Four Kites uh, GPS system, which is kind of one of Coca-Cola -co -co systems that they use, uh, in such that there will be a warning. As the driver approaches the exit, there will be a warning that will give them instructions. We have a sample of that. Brian, you want to... Um, we have a sample of what that warning would look like. It would pop up on their screen. And you know, now keep in mind that there are many GPS uh, apps. Thank you. Apps. So they can use they use whatever they. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we're, we're trying we're trying to we're trying to get whatever approaches we can that we have some control over. And so we have some influence uh, with this one. Uh, if we need to talk more about that. Uh, certainly, Brian can talk more about four kites. But the idea here is that if there are uh, GPS and four kites, then uh, they will get a notice that popped up say, hey, this is where you got to drive. Don't go this way. Okay, so that's, you know, we're trying to double or triple the opportunities uh, to make some better mitigation measures. Um, obviously, the, one of the reasons, as Brian had shared, one of the reasons we have this whole project is to hopefully mitigate some of any you know staging that might be out on the street, get them off the street, get them into the into the lot, uh, and so and that that reduces uh, any potential staging on industrial drive. It also reduces idling, which is one of the concerns that some of the residents had about fumes. If you're you know you're idling your truck, you got all these fumes going in the air. We have neighbors, uh, you know, residents that live nearby. The fumes, you know, wind goes a little bit that way. That's where the fumes are going to go. So if we can eliminate, uh, you know, the need for trucks idling on the property, uh, that will definitely help with the noise and the pollution uh, from the fumes. Um, so the other thing we did is we were challenged with some congestion out front, uh, challenged with the traffic at the streets, et cetera. So uh, did some brainstorming with my team, and we also did some data collection. We actually turned the camera um, out towards the road so that we could uh, look at what does congestion look like, what time of day does it occur, the occurrences, the time, et cetera. Um, so the team went through the data and we looked at what are the opportunities for, for us to improve. So um, first uh, thing that we've put into place is we've instructed our security guards that if there is congestion out in the street, they're to open the gate, they're to escort the one truck forward, and then they're to pull the other truck in, right? So that, that will give us the opportunity to reduce the congestion that's out front. Um, the second thing that we, uh, we have done is we have looked at our peak periods, especially during the school times and work times. So between um, 8 and 10 a.m. and um, 3 to 5 p.m., we plan on reducing the number of trucks we're going to schedule from four per hour down to two. Okay, um, that's a trial basis. Right, we're going to see what impact that potentially has. Doesn't mean trucks, the only two trucks are going to show up. They could come early, they could come late. But if there is someone that comes early, it shouldn't go above that four which we've demonstrated on a consistent basis, we have the, pro the ability to process based upon the time size of the um, We also were, have uh, instructed the security guards upon exiting that there's clear communication um, to use Damon Road, to follow, take the first right around the roundabout. 
despite the fact that we only let them turn right and have a median that directs them that, that way. And there's a sign within the median that says 91 go straight. Um, there is there is a, potentially still some folks that are going back around and doing the road. We're going to actually make that communication with them. And then lastly, we're going to um, we have been monitoring Broadway trucks that are coming up the, through the neighborhood. Um, we're actually going to step up our game on that. We're going to not only record the DOT numbers and the, and the trucking company, we're going to start recording the driver's name, and we're going to be issuing them a red card. So the purpose of the red card is to really hit them in the face um, that oh, says yeah. that says, hey, you've done something, you've done something wrong. To the red card. Straight to the red card. Right. So, we, so we have a few Europeans that work at the site, right? So <laughs> That's serious stuff. Um, so the purpose of the red card, you'll, you'll see that it's really to alert them it's that constant reminder not to, you know, you did something wrong, and it's to make sure that we have that, that communication with them. That's Question on, on the heels of that, which I think all of this is great. Uh, the enforcement of that $300 is that's a city enforcement, and Correct. so you're just collecting data. Can that, to, to drive this information uh, home along with the, the red card, can that information be given to the city? So it's after the fact, I mean, they can't find, but if they get a red card from you, and I don't know if they get a notice from the city that says, yeah. next time you get a red card, it's, or whatever, or something. I think they, so, wouldn't the police have to like, yeah. see the violation happening? Yeah. To, like, yes, yeah, I, yes, so I'm saying they're not going to get a $300 ticket, but right, if right. there's some... Oh, but if there were a police officer here, you would get no, a No, because to, this is a notice from COPE. Yes. Yeah. It says, hey, don't do this again. Right, right. But if they got a notice from the city that said, hey, you can oh, press saw it, but you did this. So if the city also time, piggybacks with or a, something. I don't, a yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how enforcing yeah. I don't think you can legally, I don't know if uh, COPE will have legal, uh, not obligation. Yeah, yeah. no, I know. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, like you can't go around and handing out things. Yeah, but we do have a solution. Yeah, Mark. As a criminal defense attorney, I'm. I think that's a no-go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No yeah. I'm just trying to see this is good data. I think Mark, what our, what our, our uh, plan is start communicating more aggressively with the carriers that we see that are the, the bigger volume mm -hmm. offenders than others, right? Asking them for corrective action plans um, and trying to go down with that. From a law enforcement perspective, that's so, that does so the how, what if you flipped it and said, uh, if Coca-Cola started finding it, you get a red card at a $50 bump. You know, if a driver's not making money unless he's driving, you know, get, get, I, something to, to emphasize. Yeah, the, I, I think that's something we can consider and look at. I, I, that's something very difficult for me to commit to. Uh, because look, with a change like that, it's not just a change you're going to make. Right. It would be a, it would be a Coca Cola oh, change, right? Yeah, that would affect. It's a corporate contract. It's a corporate contract. Yeah, and I, we I, have I, corporate contracts with, with these carriers. So yeah. that would be a. Would we be able to. to ask that maybe you let us, you know, the planning board or the city know on like a, you know, semi-annual basis, like how many of these you've issued, like just so that we also have the, the data point of like the scope of the, the intervention, or would you consider that kind of a proprietary number? No, I mean, at the end of the day, we have the same, uh, we have the same objective as the town and the city, right? And that's to reduce the number of rolling tracks. Right. So I think if we knew... So I, I, don't know if I, I don't know if I want to say now to the end of time. Right, right, right. But, uh, but if would we, said, we be willing to come back and report to the planning board and to our progress? Uh, absolutely. I've already offered um, to a number of the constituents yeah. and when they're having their next uh, Ward 3 meeting that I would personally attend to, to talk to them about, um, to talk to them about what they're still seeing. Um, so yeah, I, mean, I don't know that we, we need to know this number. No, but it like seems like it's good data. It is good, yeah, for sure. How do we how yeah, do yeah. leverage that I mean, how data. do we make sure it kind of well, should be the way you have our, plan is, our plan is our plan is to express the leverage that internally, yeah. right? And try and drive accountability with the folks we're doing. Yeah. It gives us some baseline data as well internally. It's right. like, probably a through error. The month of August, we had five. September is it's dropped to two. Right. So yeah. And and the way you do that also is you're getting information on the trucks. You're also getting information on the company that's there. You make Coke can make calls to the company and say, hey, your drivers are not going properly. You better talk to your drivers. You know, right. as an independent driver, that's a little bit different. But you know, if they're driving for a company and stuff like that, Coke has that information about the license, the driver, uh, what company they're coming from. You know, stuff like that. It gives them an ability to make a direct connection with whatever that company is to talk yeah. to that company and you know right. trickle that information down to their drivers. That's right. and on a general general global percentage basis, how many of the drivers, what percentage of the drivers are independent versus working for a company? I couldn't answer that question. No. No. 
there's, there's quite a bit of independent drivers out through the network. Or or not. They're outsourced through the carriers, and so I, I don't even know if I could get that number very easily. I think it's definitely something uh, that's probably outside the planning board jurisdiction, yeah. but it, they made a commitment to continue to work with the city, so I guess maybe that's down great. the road after they've implemented this first six months or 12 months, they could be a sit down with city councilors or mm -hmm. the mayor's office and say, okay, here's what we found. Yeah. And after this round of that has been, I, I can't imagine this is going to change. I think it's going to be a lot easier. Yeah, like no, I mean, at that point, it's a more deliberate action to, to, get, yeah. to go, you know, we just, it was to just, go the wrong way. The timing was great. Just yesterday, yeah. I was going to our offices on North Street. So I took a right on Lincoln, had cars were parked not across from each other, but almost across from each other. And the big old trucks had to go coming up the other way. So I had to pull over. And my first inclination was to sit in the middle of the road and say, you can't come this way. But it's too late. You know, they get to that point like and, I, and I get it. Market. They're following Google or whatever. And right. they get to that point, they, they got to go. So, to get out. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, yeah. No, so this I, is a really um, terrific suite of interventions. I yeah. think, and, you know, it's, uh, well, let's follow up on, a, um, we have a couple more comments about following up to what you said about six months or 12, probably yeah. more like 12 months in yeah. a little bit more yeah. history. Okay. So, um, potential future. So, we believe that the following action we just talked through should have a, have a big impact on, on uh, the work we're trying to do. I think, again, we believe that the, the biggest win for this is we get not to turn left, right? That's obviously okay. that's a number of the concerns, not all the concerns of the businesses. So, so um, potential future um, projects we're, we're still considering. Uh, one is we're entertaining um, the opportunity that we will entertain participating on the DOT. Heavy commercial vehicle study, if that's something that um, the board or the, the town would like to, we, we'd be happy to participate in that. Uh, but we also would entertain, um, you know, if there's any opportunity for stricter law enforcement um, or uh, opportunities to help in that area, we, we would be willing to have discussions on that as well. Well, we, what we want to do is we want to, we want to try these actions out that we presented to you mm -hmm. because these other two actions that we're talking about, possibly in the future, are what I would call patches. They're not solutions. Right. They're patches, right? And we don't want a patch unless we really need to have one. Yeah. We would really try to go for the solution and fix the problem first, so that we don't have to worry about patches. I mean, you're always going to get that one driver, two driver, no matter what we do. You know, we put road spikes out. They're still going to go that way, all right? So, uh, and I think one of the comments that uh, we would really like the board to consider is that not to just limit any signage to code. Uh, a couple of reasons. One is uh, DOT, as you probably are a little bit aware, they're a little lenient, or not lenient was the word I'm looking for, a little hesitant about advertising yeah. for somebody, right? And if you have Coca Cola trucks right here, you know, it's kind of free advertising kind of thing. Uh, and, you know, you have problems with people going under the bridge. A lot of evidence of that. So, uh, you know, something like this, and right now you've got two signs that basically detour trucks that go that way through their communities, right? right? So if we can find a way to put up the proper signage, uh, both in the interim before the circle's done, and then even after the interim, which I think will even be a better opportunity for us, um, I think the residents here will win-win. Okay. Um, so that's kind of a, that's kind of the overall of the things that we tackled. <clears throat> what we're really looking for from the board tonight uh, is, you know, we pr we presented uh, the project again to you. Uh, you know, we've done it with pretty much. There are no variances required. There are no negative impacts. We're not making the situation any worse than it already is, depending on how you look at that. Uh, we show, you know, we, we believe that the trailers will actually help the situation. Maybe not to the degree that, you know, that we're trying to solve the other problems with, but certainly it's not going to be any worse. You know, and Coke has really stepped forward uh, to renegotiate, to reopen all those discussions that they've had in the past with the various parties in the city to really pursue. Uh, some of these and committed to pursuing some of them at their expense uh, as soon as we can get the support that we need from the state from the city to be able to initiate them. Great. So we are asking tonight if the board would consider uh, approving our project. Thank you very much. Uh, are you ready to make a motion? No. We're not ready to. <laughs> yes. Uh, good question. Do, do, sir, you have a sense, so we know trucks, they're following the Google Maps and they turn the wrong way. Do we know from security, is it is it one or two a day, or is it two or three a week, or is it, uh, is there a frequency enough that, that, is it an everyday occurrence? Um, yeah, it's an everyday occurrence. Uh, I think it's, 
raises from two or three. I'm just I'm, I'm wondering, and I think everything we proposed is excellent. I think that's what we were asking for. It's just instead of saying, well, it's always been a problem, it's but we're inside the, the, the lot. We're not going to make it any worse. Um, and uh, you know, it's just that's just the way it is. But you come back and you, you proactively, well, maybe not we told you to do it, but. Um, I think this is great, but I'm, I'm hung up on the, on the enforcement. I'm wondering if you do work in the street, you hire a cop for a day, and and they direct traffic. Or Netta has got two cops there for six months. I'm wondering on the enforcement thing if once a month for six months, if Coca-Cola hires a cop, so the enforcement's not on you, but you hire a cop to sit at the corner of you know Lincoln Ave or whatever, ticket or something, and just to if that has any effect. And maybe between that and the red cards and, and the signage and the, the word gets out pretty soon that, or, or something, I don't know. If, if that's, the you know, problem, even in our purview, but. The yeah. problem is, is that he was saying that there's such high turnover. Yeah. I mean, so. Well, this would be more for the, 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 the company trust than the independent guy. Yes, yeah. yeah. Because if the word gets back to the company, then the company, I would imagine, would change their, their tune. I mean, I think. Between this and the roundabout, mm -hmm. I think a lot of this will be alleviated, but I'm just wondering. Right. Well, I think the other piece is you could see what, how these implementation measures affect the, you know, get a look at the data that the city could do some selective enforcement. I think oh, the information I got from the police department was that they have issued one, they issued one ticket in June of 2018. <laughs> so they're not really, it's not really on their radar. Right, and that's under, so, just, they've got other priorities than right. to sit in the industrial park, and I get that. And that's why I if you hire an off-duty police officer for right. six hours, you know, between the heat <clears throat> or whatever, just to see. Is it the same impact if somebody, if, if that, if something is happening, if, if somebody calls the police, like would the enforcement be the same? If, Somebody, the venture, the venture, the venture, the venture. Yeah. Oh, I see. You're saying by the time they get there. Because they're going to be so efficient now, turning trucks over. <laughs> 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 I think yeah, it's yeah. worth seeing if what they're doing yeah. works. I, I, you know, I mean, there, there is something to be said about uh, avoiding um, police action with uh, working class truck drivers, many of whom are going to be minority. Um, so I, I mean, I just it's a bad look <laughs> to 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 be I think sort of corporately imposing a, a, a police interaction before we even see if this other stuff works. I think that's what we that's why we proposed it that way, not because of the, the minority issue, but so procedurally, um, is there a way that we can condition this sort of like phased implementation, like? I think, it's too, I think what you what you would want to do, so you're looking at the project, you're looking at their argument about the 12 you know, new um, turnaround um, staging for the site, and you need to make the determination that it's meeting the requirements in, um, for site plan approval. They, you know, you couldn't, con so they've showed the things that they've already started to implement, because yeah. there were issues that came up. Um, I don't think you can, um, I think the last condition did, um, five or six years ago, did say make sure you notify your drivers. They did do that, but then, you know, GPS exploded and um, so it went off into a different direction. Now they're sort of coming back with different signage as well as the fact that we're getting a roundabout. But I think that what your purview really is you know, they, they've taken steps to address the issues that are a little bit beyond the scope mm -hmm. of what they're asking for this minor site plan amendment for this kind of pad. So I think you need to determine whether that's being fixed and whether what they're showing you is enough to sort of address some of those things mm -hmm. We make a condition that 12 months from now, if, if they're collecting data, and 12 months from now, we just hear back. Even if not at the well, year, yeah. just internal, yeah. I mean, an internal be, report. We could do it, yeah. An you could certainly say, you know, 12 the, months from the day of the permit, Coke shall submit the data they've collected for how many red you know, cards. Like by month by month, how many red cards were issued. I mean, that would be great. Yeah, and then they don't have to come back to you, they just, that's the delivery. Right, right. right. That goes to just the, the, the office. office. Right, right, right. 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 I mean, yeah, just like kind of, yeah, like a, Stuff or like a, yeah, yeah, other kinds of, yeah. 
Position opens up, they pull into that dock position. Uh -huh. Right here. So you look down here. <clears throat> so they would come in here and they would idle on stage right here. Right, right. So, oh. But there's 12, yep. there, there's 12 trucks that can necessarily fit in. And why are there? Why well, there's really a lot of trucks that fit here. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Um, so your question is what happens today, right? So, so, so yeah. they'll come in if there's not a place ready, they are, they are laying up all right. over here along yes. the Yes, and they're idling. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. there's some that are idle here now. Okay. Because that's they typically would either come here and drop <clears throat> and wait to be loaded mm -hmm. so that they could exit back out of the property okay. or they would come all the way around. And we also have doors over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they would idle here then to then to go back and then go place. back and this Correct. is the exit back. Correct. So yeah. all all flow that goes over here also goes back. Okay. So in theory, it sounds like this this improvement will eliminate you kind of seeing lots of trucks queuing up, waiting for idling, idling, waiting to drop off their trailers. Right. I think that, I think you should I think you should see less idling here, right? And there should be less there should be less dropping here. Right. There will be more picking up here. Okay. So they, they were actually um, dropping the trailers right here on this? We do have some that drop there now, yes. Really? I think this morning when I <laughs> went outside, there was three, to, three to four. Yeah. Maybe that's part of the... I, our, my other concern was the integrity of our house because um, I, when we were talking to um, David, um, 
when they back up, I don't know if they hit the bumpers, but the, I, they will hear a loud boom, which frankly doesn't really bother me that much because I'm used to 91, I'm used to the airport, I grew up here. It's the shaking. It's like these mini earthquakes. So I'm wondering, you know, if if they get dropped off. Like, I'm not sure where those mini earthquakes are coming. Yeah. You know, I don't want to add to those mini earthquakes. Um, and each pad, is that 12 feet by 55 yes. feet? Yes. Yes. Or just a trailer. So the tractor does not stay there, just drops the trailer. OK. 55 feet. Um, and when you say <clears throat> not more traffic, are you sure about <coughs> not more traffic, or are you just anticipating that there are not going to be more trucks? Just the drop lot will not increase the amount of trucks that enter and exit the facility area. Yeah. Okay. Versus. <clears throat> so my biggest concern right now is those many earthquakes that we. Yeah. I think yeah. I think you're raising it. To them is, is helpful, so yes. that, you know it's um, yeah. I think they can uh, okay. add that to their list of things that they're okay. looking at. And I just wanted to make it public. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you for being here so late. Thank you. Do we feel yes? Do you feel yes, Councilor Nash? You didn't want to say. I've been waiting a month. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, uh, first of all, you know, I, I'd really like to thank, um, well, first of all, planning board last month voting to continue. I think the, the discussion that has happened and the innovate, innovative ideas that have come out of it was, was voting to continue the man, I'm tired. <laughs> was voting to continue. So I want to thank you for that. I also want to thank uh, Coca-Cola for all of the terrific ideas that they're coming up with. Um, they are, especially Mr. Brian Duran, he's really stepping up to the plate. Um, uh, we arranged to meet with uh, Mass um, Dot on Monday, and we started to have those discussions with them about the signage. I've met with them before, you know, and, and, and I get the pushback, you know, oh, we're not going to put anything with a logo on it. And, uh, you know, things that, you know, but having Coca-Cola at the table, you know, with their roughly 50,000 trucks a year, you know, coming into our city, they start to get that maybe this is pretty important. Um, the thing I'd like to share with you um, is um, a little study that I did. Um, I, uh, when Vera and I were covering a, a recent uh, truck um, crash with a bridge back in um, early uh, July. Um, the, the driver explained that um, uh, he had been leaving Coca-Cola of all places. And um, that, you know, you, you know, right now we've been talking about trucks getting to Coca-Cola. You know, that there's, there's also a problem of the trucks leaving at times. And um, that uh, it prompted me to call the chief of police and say, what do we know about data about uh, trucks hitting the bridge? You know, well, where are these trucks going? She says, I don't know. But she sent me a pile of reports, and I started calling these carriers. And the carriers um, indicated that of uh, the, the, over the last two and a half years that we've had 11 bridge strikes, six of them have been um, those Bridge strikes had to do with trucks uh, servicing Coca-Cola, um, and that um, and I brought this information to that mass dot meeting with um, with Brian and me to underline that mass dot also really needs to step up to the plate here, not mm -hmm. just in terms of getting these trucks, you know, to not go into the neighborhood, but also to not hit the bridge. That we have a series of systems in place to direct people away from the bridge, uh, but um, again, making, making sure that people don't, that trucks don't take that left turn is, is really important. Um, the, the thing I really want to uh, emphasize here is that I'm glad to hear that, um, that Coca-Cola is talking about reaching out to their carriers. 
you know, I, I spent a lot of time talking to these different people. And that they have ideas and they have systems to fix things. You'll notice there was three bridge strikes by a, a company called New Prime. And it happened all within, you know, two and a half months. And that I said, ask them what they did. And well, they have an internal system, you know, they talk to their drivers and they have a discussion. And that I think that, you know, the, the efforts that Coca-Cola is talking about doing here and coupling it with, um, with reaching out to their carriers will make a, a big difference. Um, so, therefore, you know, I, I, I'm supporting the idea of this moving forward. Um, I also realize there's not a lot of conditions we can do under a uh, site plan, um, and, um, and I am, um, I am trusting and confident that Coca-Cola will be coming to the plate to, to continue to discuss with neighbors um, solutions to this problem. So. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you again. Yes. I, I did forget one thing, and I'm really okay. sorry. When you mentioned lighting, oh. I just want to know exactly how, in what direction that lighting. The lighting is downcast. Downcast, yep. but towards the building. We can show you here. Yes. We're required to. Okay. You know, by city ordinances to yep. I'll put it over here so they can see it as well. Okay. Our building is to protect the lighters from lighting. So okay. If you have requirements in place that lighting can't point into your window, okay. Um, that would be out of compliance. Answer your question? That's my question. Okay. And, I, and I'd also like to um, reiterate what Jim said mm -hmm. and thank Hope for, for um, all they're trying to do. Um, uh, and I also agree with Jim. I think Mass DOT needs to really step up to the plate with the with the signage. It's it's. I mean. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is a great improvement. I, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be brief because I've spoken many times at the transportation <laughs> and I've heard it all. Um, and my biggest thing is. Just for you to put in the cable news for this month and portion all this happened because it's been years. Um, I live on Lincoln Avenue and it's a nightmare. But um and I personally went to Mass DOT one time years ago when they started the meetings talking about flyovers and roundabouts and how they were gonna reconstruct the whole ninety one thing. Um, and I spoke with the guy's name. And I spoke with him, and he told me that you know the best time to fix the problem is going to be when they do this roundabout or reconstruction there to get the signs in. So if, if you just keep on them, and get the right <laughs> the right signage. It doesn't need to say so Coca-Cola. It just said industrial park. Mm -hmm. Even this um, note from the facility, it says Coca-Cola. Some of those drivers don't know that they're going to Coca-Cola. It, it says Miniman or, or Minute, Minute, Minute Maid or I, I looked at one because we stopped them on them. Um, <laughs> coming down the street. Um, and it doesn't even say either though. Some of them are other things. Yeah. So um, and a lot of them don't speak English. So that's another concern too with that. So but anyway, but I it sounds like finally that we're in the right direction here and so thank you. One of the bigger issues for the other, the industrial park tenants was the queuing up outside of their driveway. And you spoke about how you're going to alleviate that, the security guard is on that person when he or she sees the trailers out on the road. They're going to let one truck go forward, one trailer go forward, and pull the other one into the driveway. So there's two now there, right? And he or she's going to go and talk to that first driver, let them go through, talk to the second <coughs> driver. And, but then he or she's also 
responsible for the trucks leaving the plant mm -hmm. on the other side, right? So it's just one person in that um, security booth? Correct. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So how are we going to monitor that, well, the, the queuing yeah, outside? Yeah, I mean, again, we said, well, like, that because it's the public road, that right. that's something that both the combination of that change and reducing the peak the peak time, 8 to 10 a.m., 3 to 5 p.m., testing out, reducing that <coughs> fuel from four trucks to two trucks, both of those things taken together will probably have some impact on that. But you know, again, that's, we had talked about this last time, that if somebody were to call the police on someone who is idling, which is yeah. not allowed, uh, that can happen, but that's not something that folks can do if the person is outside of their gates. So they're doing these two things that will allow people to come in. So we've asked for them for an annual report around the red cars and some other things. So we have no way of capturing any data about the queuing up on the streets. I, I, I don't think there's any way we could require them to put a camera on the street and give us footage or anything like that. I mean, this is. Watch that. Yeah, yeah. No I mean, cameras. <laughs> <laughs> no no. I mean, that's, yeah, that, that, you know, that, yeah. this is kind of the but balance between. In theory, these 12 additional pads will, will increase the drop and go, which will decrease the, the queuing. Right. In theory? No. No. No, um, no it's not kind of still. No. No. They're still going to be queuing out there on the road while they're pulling their trailers in and they're dropping them off. So, so yes, <coughs> yes and no. Is that the intent of it? No. Right. Um, if we are more consistent on the number of, that we send out each hour, right? Because we have a more repeatability on a customer we're turning around those trucks, that could potentially have a benefit. Our average processing time um, for the garden processing truck is two minutes. Um, and so when we talk about four trucks in, four trucks out an hour, that's roughly 16 minutes within an hour. Um, that can, it can go above, right? So if people show up earlier, people will get loaded slower that, that can, can, can fluctuate. But that's not the intent of the job. Right, no, I understand. Yeah. And we're talking like maybe two, three trucks at a time. So the idea here is, is that if there's a double truck, you know, if there's a double truck, if the, if the gate guard is, is, is there with a the truck and there's a truck sitting outside and another truck, you know, is coming in, he'll pull them in so that we don't have many trucks out there. I mean, the idea <coughs> is, is that the amount of time for the processing time isn't much more than a traffic light. Right. Right. You can't get around, but they're not sitting there for 10 minutes. 15 minutes trying to get around. It's, a tra it's just, you just don't have a physical traffic light there, but it's about the time of the traffic light. And so what Coke is trying to do is to say, look, you know, if we get in a situation where we're seeing queuing going on up there, we're willing to, we're, we're training our guards to basically pull that vehicle that he's servicing, pull it up, say, pull forward, let's get another truck in here, you know, it's in, and that's what we're trying to see. We want, we're trying to find solutions, yeah. and that works right now for what their operations are, and we think it will be effective. And obviously, we you know folks can be around for quite a while, so you know there's always opportunities to sit down again and rehash all the approaches that are working. Uh, just a quick question: How do we memorialize what is being offered? Because the only condition we have is can we get a report in a month or a year? Um, so I, again, I just want to reiterate: I'm yeah, in yeah. full favor of the, of the proposal, and I appreciate very much. I, I'm, I'm happy with what we did last month yeah, continuing because yeah. it, 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 it made a substantive change happen. Um, and I appreciate Coca-Cola very much for stepping up. Mm -hmm. um, but how do we memorialize that? Can we include these items, just a, a status update on these items in that annual report? Or, or do we, can can we, we, I mean, I don't know if we're allowed we to do that, this, but this is like, you know, yes. Or we approve this with, it's, it's with conditions. They're not really conditions that they're being right. offered up. So how, or is that, can we well, make no, you, these? I mean, your condition would be in 12 months, um, you need to submit to the city, the Office of Planning and Sustainability, uh, the data by month about the number of red cars issued. And you could include, you know, um, how many, you know, what the stacking was on Industrial Drive, or just so like the, the signage with the DOT, there's, they're, they're making a good faith effort to. to well, you work. can't condition that because that's you're, that you would be then telling DOT to right. do something. Right. Right. So and I'm you just can't saying. Do that. So, so uh, there's nothing you can do about conditioning that or memorializing that because um, you're because the city doesn't have that authority. Right. 
But no, but that could be one of the questions, so to speak, on the report. What is the status update on your conversations with the OT about the sign? Oh, well, what would you do? What would what, what would I do when I receive that? If they say, oh, the update is, yeah, it's not happening now. The sign we can't assume the permit. I mean, part of this is that it is mostly our purview is about like physical sites, and this is very much about behavior. So it's hard for us yeah. to, it, yeah. I, I can't I, think of a way for us to memorialize it other than in the form of the reporting of data, and that's the extent of it. And then kind of hoping that everybody, you know. Maybe I can make a suggestion that I think might put you at ease is that Ryan has already offered to meet with the district at least on his first basis. You know, and I'm sure he would be open to meeting you know, on a regular basis if you will, especially if there's issues. If they have issues, they'll call them up. I think, you know, Brian is a different type of plant manager who really wants to get involved and try to work with the community. And you've got your watchdog right there. Right. 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 You've got the watchdog. Boom, right. boom, boom, boom. He's going to be out in order. He's too darn good. Yeah, that's the thing. One of the benefits, like I said tonight, of us all standing outside is there were a lot of handshaking, a lot of talking, a lot of communication, good, good communication going on. You know, I mean, I don't find more than this project either, but he seemed like a nice guy the entire time. You know, and uh, I mean, we, we we can we can go through all we can go through a lot of this, but at the end of the day, the way this problem is going to be solved is getting people to go straight out of the camera. Yeah. And that alleviates not every right because right? there's other some other issues as well. Right. That alleviates 95 percent of the. The, I think, the, I think the, this has been a lot of discussion that goes well beyond what the purview yep. is yep. and into a great benefit like so right. maybe I mean I feel comfortable that the that there's enough momentum that if we condition the data reporting you know the annual status report that I both of you close the public second <laughs> All yes we feel <laughs> All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Does someone else have a motion? Another kind of motion? Motion to approve the site plan of the Coca-Cola company to expand trailer storage at 45 Industrial Drive, Northampton. Map ID 258-185 with the condition that condition? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That uh, the applicant implement measures present to the board. Well, this, yeah. this measures yeah. they sent, right? Uh, they provided, uh, provided an annual report 12 months okay. from the yeah. of the permit. I thought we were talking about this stuff here. Yeah. We can't we require can't. that. Uh, yeah. It's not enforceable. Okay. Yeah. We can provide, get Coca Cola a red card. They don't do it. Provide an annual report with monthly data on the issuance of red cards to drivers. Yeah. That's it. That? yeah. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Yeah. Discussion? Sorry. Uh, so uh, the issuance of red cards, yes. how about any, uh, just a, so, so memorialization is a funny word, but really we're documenting it for the next planning board members when Coke comes back three years from now. So how about, um, was there any meetings with the Ward 3 neighborhood group? Chet, could that be on the report? Well, I think um, that would just be if they came back in for another permit. Right, right. right. That's so we can't be able to look at something. Aren't we saying that they're going to have this regular meeting with the, that's one thing, which would be a very proactive step on their right. part. I mean, the issue, Georgia, is that when Carolyn gets that information, yeah. we won't be able to act upon it. No, no, but it'll be information so, that's coming to the board, right? Yeah, but I think we generally, we shy away from kind of asking people to report on things that are not actionable within our board's authority. <coughs> so I don't think you could say, we have a minute of the meeting. Right. That's not state plan related. That's okay. getting very. Right. That's a very different approach from how okay. we typically. Well, maybe the counselor can do it through the transportation committee. But there's got to be some documentation that this is all happening again, and these are the steps that were put in place. And I know it's wrong. I agree. Okay. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Anyone opposed? Go ahead, Kevin. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I got the whole presentation again. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much.
on right. that garage, right? Right. Like if the garage were well, they would go to the zoning board. The garage is right. terrible. No, I know. I, I have to kick down the garage. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm So I just am trying to make it work. Right. Uh, just for, for the for the board's, you know, clarification that, that there's a scenario where the accessory dwelling unit would be wouldn't even require her to come before us if the garage weren't coming down. Well, because the garage is coming down, she has to come here. So it's a new building. It's a new building. And it's converting to a residential use, which is de I mean, They would still have to come to you because it would be a detached. Oh, detached. Um, um, yeah. If it were attached, it would be it. Right. Yeah. Take it all back. Sorry. In any event, I'm, I was very happy to read your application. I think that's a great spot for an additional little Thank dwelling you. unit. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Move to go to public comment. Oh, do you want to say something? Public Are there any public comments? Oh, I'm, I'm actually with her in case you had any questions. <laughs> <laughs> there are no public comments. So we can close the public hearing. We don't have any more questions for the applicant. Second. I'm no. in favor. <laughs> All those in favor. Anyone opposed? Any additional discussion? Questions? Yes? Did I hear the exact That was her. That was her. That was her. That was her. That was not me. Sorry. I'm not a girl, though. What's up? Carolyn, tell me about this paper street of Mesa. Yes. You can't see it. It doesn't exist. <laughs> so what happens is your the property line goes to the center of the paper street. Right. So and DPW made a comment about that actually in their comments that you know so that they basically um, it just never got built so um, it gets divided down the center line uh -huh. essentially. Uh -huh. So it means that at some point long long ago there was going to be a development and that street was going to exist and it was approved but yeah. it never came to there was it's in the for their for their abutting line they measure from the property line not from the center of that easement um, that well, well it, it depends so with a pay so it's not an easement uh -huh. and it, it depends um i just want to make sure that their frontage and their uh setbacks are legitimate <clears throat> yes so actually, the garage the now is going to be 15 feet for the property line, but they have an extra sort of whatever the width is. So it's a 20 foot wide paper street. They get 10 feet of that uh, as their property. Uh, okay. Great. I'll make a motion uh, to approve the site plan uh, for Cherry Winfield for a detached residential structure, 41 Riverside Drive, Florence Map ID 23D-56 with the one condition that prior to the issuance of a final certificate of occupancy, the applicant shall confirm that the tree replacement has been fulfilled in compliance with the ordinance. Is there a second? Second. Sam, raise the hand. Uh, <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Those opposed? Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you. I appreciate well, it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and 9 p.m. our last item, or not our last item, is uh, okay. a zoning map amendment to modify the city zoning map to rezone five parcels from general industrial to office industrial, uh, all in the areas of River Road and Water Street. And we have a printout of that. Um, that is down. So, um, Peter Brook, where? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Please. Please. So it's across from the post, so the area is sort of um, are near the post office in Leeds. The property on the north side is, is Chart Path. Um, there are two parcels actually, the one that um, fits One River Road um, is two parcels. And then there's a parcel further up River Road, 120 River Road, which is um, on the west side of, of the road going towards Williamsburg. Um, as well as two properties on Water Street. One is owned by the DPW because it's um, a little um, treatment um, facility. And then the other one is another, uh, an old brick mill industrial building on Water Street. So those are all currently zoned general industrial. The idea is just we've been looking at changing the general industrial district.
district outside of the industrial park to office industrial. Um, there, it, it allows more flexibility um, because um, there are uses allowed in the office industrial that aren't allowed in general industrial, mainly residential above the first floor. Mm -hmm. um, for older mill buildings, there's also more flexibility in the reuse of those for things that aren't typically in, um, you know, aren't office or industrial type uses, so restaurant um, mm -hmm. kind of uses for old mill buildings, not newer buildings. And in theory, like real industrial, we would want to direct it towards the industrial part right. anyway. Like Right. The big issue with general industrial is it allows um, big truck warehousing, right. which right. doesn't make sense in this part of the city anyway because it's not next to the interstate. So nobody's really going to be locating that kind of use here. Um, the other piece of the um, zoning is to, there's a strip that's owned by the same owner um, at 120 River Road that's on the um, right along the riverbank in the floodplain and um, is not a buildable parcel because it's right on the river edge. Um, rezone that to special um, floodplain and, um, I'm sorry, special conservancy um, because it's really just indicating that it's the floodplain as opposed to a developable parcel. That's the one that has the dash, the bag on? Yes. Right. Right. In theory, how come the other parcel, the big parcel that's like right next to it, could they like carve off half their plan and be like, this isn't developable either, why don't you just take it, and it's like this one? Like, because that part wouldn't be developable either. Right, but you could put parking yeah. or something like oh, that. Right. But you just couldn't put a building. Oh, and right. you'd also need conservation commission approval, and right. so it's just sort of being more accurate yeah, yeah. in what's oh, that makes um, sense. allowed. So, this went through, we had a meeting, um, we reached out to the property owners to try to get feedback. I heard from several of the property owners, actually, actually all the property owners. Um, and then we had a meeting with the Civic Association mm -hmm. um, back in June before this was introduced. Um, and so, um, you know, so far through that process, the property owners have been on board and the and the, it was in, um, one of the property owners actually asked for the change so that they could have more flexibility in the, and reuse the building. And so our um, our work would be to make a positive recommendation to the city, city council. council. And, it, and it's scheduled to go to the city council legislative matters committee on Monday. And then if it gets through that, it will go back to city council for a first reading next Thursday. Great. Questions? Comments? Discussion? Motions? Public comment? Yeah, I'd like to speak. I might. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Sorry, I didn't say yeah, I apologize. Uh, 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 Please, public comment. You're welcome. Uh, thank you. My name is Mark Bernstein. I own the property at 12 Water Street in Leeds. I've owned it for about 42 years. And it's been my great pleasure to maintain that property and see it put to productive use. Um, I'm very much in favor of industrial development economic development. Um, I'm hopeful that this change will facilitate that. However, I do want to have some assurance that we're not losing any opportunities for use by making this change. And I'm looking at Carolyn and I'm asking for your assurance. And I think I've already had it verbally, yeah. but I wanted to have it stated in public so that I'm relying on the fact that this is an expansion of use, but not a, a limitation. That's my one concern. I mean, it is a limitation on the warehousing part, right? Of general right. Industrial. So the large-scale warehousing would no longer would not be allowed because that's what's allowed in general industrial. So the big sort of Amazon type of storage facility where you've got tractor trailers coming and going, um, just for the purpose of storage. It's a little bit different than that because they're actually mixing sugar with their water. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but yes, yeah, so it would be a, that kind of thing is not allowed in the office industrial. On the other hand, is I think I mentioned over the phone, um, and which is in the code, um, it adds um, self storage uh, um, to the equation. It also allows residential component above the first floor. 
and it also allows flexibility for the reuse of older mill buildings such as yours to incorporate restaurants um, through planning board approval um, for those older mm -hmm. mill buildings. But when you say large scale, is there a definition of that? You mean so, in terms of warehousing? Yeah, I mean we do a little bit of warehousing. We have trailers coming in occasionally. Um, but is it for a, is it accessory to the other um, function that's going? Not necessarily. I've had on occasions um, have somebody come in just for seasonal storage, actually, and that was just strictly warehousing. So um, there, is, I mean, you know, so this component does allow storage. It's considered, it's called self-storage, um, but um, you know, the warehousing component um, is what would would change. Now, if you have it now, you would be grandfathered um, if you wanted to continue that as a. Well, as it's a, not a regular thing, and. I'm just trying to get a better understanding of, you know, is there a, a square footage limitation? Uh, or no. Um, so I'm just going to pull up the, the language just so I'm not missing any of the text. talking about a lot of square footage. Our building is only 17,000 total. So probably the most that we would warehouse would be about 7,000 maybe, if we were to get into that situation. I mean, so it allow office industrial still allows wholesale trade and distribution. It allows, um, uh, and That would include warehousing for distribution? Um, so for distribution, yes. And then, but the difference is that in the general industrial zone, the language is, in addition, there's um, motor freight terminal warehousing associated with either commercial industrial uses, and then also industrial warehousing not associated with or accessory to other uses up to a maximum of 25,000 square feet, but not retail storage. That's the general industrial. But there's still distribution that's allowed under office industrial. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all set. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good. It's in the public record. We see an Amazon truck coming down the road. I know. Your way. We're going to. No, I hope not. Not on Water Street. I think there's a bridge limitation, actually. So maybe we can keep them up. This might be the Amazon headquarters. Yeah, it was on two, right? It was like, who leads us in the running? Um, is there a recommendation to city council? Is there additional discussion? I think this is wonderful, as always. I'll make a recommendation to the city council for a modification of the city zoning map to rezone five parcels from GI to office industrial. With also a closing and hearing at the same time. <clears throat> and I think there's also, we're recommending a second modification, right? To, to rezone map 532 parcel from GI to Special Conservancy. And you want to, and I'll also recommend to close the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have two more items of business. Uh, Pequoy. Um, Pequoy, I have it. Brady, sorry. Tess, you have failed miserably. I know. Well, oh, I, yeah. I messed up on the agenda sending it to you, but I had it. It was in your pocket. Oh, okay. I started out so strong, and then <laughs> right, and then I just went through these. The bathroom break ruined us. Okay, okay. okay. you never be allowed to go to the bathroom. It broke anyway. <laughs> so um, I think it was a bin drum. You got the you got the email about the um, change. The requested yes. change from underground utilities to yeah. overhead. Yeah. So I oh, put it out yes. to you as a um, as a request for you know whether you think it's enough to ask them to come back for a full site plan amendment, or if you think that it's just a minor enough modification you can do as an administrative change. 
So that's I feel like it could be an administrative change with the caveat that that person was so unbelievably smug about their, their perfect infill project right. where they were doing Olive Street. That's not relevant to my assessment that this is like pretty minor, but, but it was just one of those moments of like, really? Really? Do you remember this? No. Wow. Yeah, no. You don't remember this? I mean, I... Mark remembers. What? You mean... Mark remembers this. Do you remember this on South Street? This is the old veterinary clinic. Yeah. The old veterinary clinic. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I was at the meet. I don't think I was on plan and when that. And the applicant was like very, like, Smug about it? yeah, like this project is like much better infill than the other across the street. Well, what's project. The, so what's the deal anyway? She, they were supposed to go underground with their utility. Right. Right. Now expensive. it's too expensive. Right. So they're going to go above ground. I walked it the other day, and it's like, well, where is the electricity coming in anyway? Where's the pole? I don't even see. Where's the the pole is already there yeah, right? the at the corner yeah. sort of at the Hebert Avenue. Yeah. So they would take um, a connection overhead directly to the back of the front portion of that building. So the original building that was the veterinary office is here. They tore off the back and they're adding units to the yeah. back. So they're going to run the electricity to the back of that front unit. So it's not going to be on the, the, meters, the right. street facing side. Um, and originally they were going to um, put it underground to that same side of the house. Did we condition that? Or they just no, it's just it's part of it's part of their application. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah. So basically, you can either decide that you can do it as an administrative amendment here, or then say no, we want you to file an official amendment. Um, or we could just like it. deny it and say no, you have to comply with the, the plan. Good. Yeah, you know what you mean to do, but, well, like, but you, <laughs> you could say no at this point, well, and then they could still it. officially apply to right. go through the public hearing process. They're just asking for an administrative right. review. I certainly knew that it was not appropriate for staff level review, so that's why I brought it to you to determine whether it's an administrative at yeah. the board level or if you want it on. Um, there is a huge benefit to getting as many lines underground as humanly possible. Like, you know. I, I my, my concern when I read it was that it just, it, like the letter was like, and we might have a bunch of other things we can't afford to do. Too. Like, <laughs> yeah. This is one thing. And, I, and I'm like, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm like, so are we going to get these things like piecemeal? Like, right. mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, and so I'm just wondering if, if it just makes sense for them. Because I'm, it, I actually am not opposed. I mean, it'd be nice, but I think the cost is yeah. um I guess I'd just sort of like them to come and tell me if if there are going to be a what bunch else? of other changes. What, what but, yeah, I mean, changes? mainly, I mean, that was just how they wrote it. I mean, it right. sounded right. like there could be a bunch of things. And right, they fired the first contractor working with the second one. Yeah. Right. Hand in hand on um, value engineering. Yeah. 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 Like, you can only get so much out of a loan. Yeah. You can get yeah. so much money. Sounds like right. a, the plan may have changed. Yeah, so yeah. I just feel like we just need to take a step back and, and, like what have, the, and have them, we can like, give them a red card. <laughs> <laughs> why? Well, we should have a whole color coordinate. Why, why are you stopping at red? <laughs> red is soccer. So, okay, so, when, so we could ask them to just come back and reapply, or apply for an amendment, amendment in front of us yeah. with any and all changes that they would want yeah. to make. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and would we suggest that they do that in the September meeting? Oh, oh, they wouldn't have time. Okay, right. they would okay. need to submit documents. We need to post it. Oh, we need to right, send right, out right. Okay. Better notice. All right. Oh. So there would be time for them to add in any of these other oh. changes that might happen. So we give them a heads up that the board is not in favor at this point of allowing this change, the electrical change. Oh, I don't you think we're not in favor of it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, I think I we're, think we're, we're more just concerned saying, with her language. Yeah, that it's not. I'm probably the only brat who like thinks that we should vary all the way. I think we should, have, but I no, you're not but, the only person. Yeah. I think we talk about it all the time. Yeah. That that's really the, yeah. the expected level. But I don't think if we had to take a vote right now, we would like deny it per se. But no, as I presented, think that's what it was. So, so I think yeah. the fear is what else. As right, right. So we should see. Yeah, we should. I mean, I'm, I'm saying, like, I mean, to me, it's like, if this is the only thing, you know, they did this whole project, and then they don't have the money, and they're saying they don't have the money for it. But if this is the only thing that's right. stopping them from doing it, well, then they need to do it. Right. 
But if suddenly there's, there's a, one of there's a bunch of things well, that are other costs. Could we split and, and if, if, if it's been brought in front of us and we, and if our determination is if this is the only thing and it's okay with us, if that's our, if we agree with that, then they don't need to come back in front of us. And so if, if oh, Carolyn, confirm so Carolyn with confirms with them. Oh, this is yeah. the only change right. that they're planning on. But if you're, if you're going to eliminate the porch or change the roof line, then you got to come back okay. with everything. So I will tell you, they did alter already a, a minor change between the buildings. Rejected. <laughs> Do you want to ask? Do you want this? Yeah. Um, but it was sort of a, a access between the you know second block of buildings and the first um, building. So, so it was pretty minor. But I could certainly give this message that if you vote to approve this change, but any other, you know, Amendment will not be able to come through this way. It'll have to come through a form. Right. Yeah, we could. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I would feel comfortable doing that. Like, yeah, that. here's your. This is like your last chance. Here's your copy. Right. Right. This is it. Yeah. Here you go. Next time it's the full. Full, full force. Full yeah. force. Force the board. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that may have to come. Uh, could, we, could we actually have a motion? Yeah. 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 Anybody? Anybody? Do have an actual motion and a vote on that? A motion to approve the administrative change. Yes, we are. The only administrative change to this particular site plan, any future changes would have to come through the board. So moved. So moved. <laughs> Second. Second. Yeah. Second. Great. Uh, all those in favor? Anyone opposed? <laughs> so you're approving the, to do this overhead electrical line, not underground. That's what we're doing right now, right? Correct. This is the only yes. change. Okay, so I, I don't okay. agree. And we have minutes. We have two sets of minutes. Yeah. I move to approve. What happened to the peak light? Did we do that? We can do that. Um, do whatever you want to do first. Fine. Right. Who did minutes? Harry, eyeball. What was that? No, no, no. I'm going to pull it all nighter. Are you kidding me? This, this is, is just Tessa's like last night. She's going out with at 11 o'clock. It's time to have every eyeball to Harry. Yeah. 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 I'm just fuzzy. I'm not giving you a pair of eyeballs. Move. Sam, move to approve the minutes. Hold on, I, you, I found a spelling error in one of the. Yes. Oh. No, I'll just. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All those in favor of approving the minutes yes. from June 27 and you July 11. Yes. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain <laughs> who wasn't here? I would. I think it is a vote. Yes. Okay, this one is a covenant swap for Pecoy. They um, all of a sudden wanted a sale on the one they just put a covenant on. Really? <laughs> so they want to switch it from um, six and ten to um, six and fifteen. They want to release lot ten. After what's his face on the lot? I just accidentally signed it. So somebody better make a motion because I, I just signed it. I vote to approve the switching of the covenant. A second. Great. Those in favor? Yes. Anyone opposed? Thank you. You're welcome. What? I move to close the meeting. Yeah. Yes. All those in favor? Yes. Anyone opposed? 